Now, if you have me on Instagram, I posted the other day that I'm gonna be doing another giveaway. Now, this one's gonna be more aimed at the Sephiro sort of Evo crowd that are more into imports. Uh, everyone is eligible. The way you are gonna win is if you've bought stickers, I have every single person's name on a list. So I'm gonna leave this for a couple of weeks, like, I don't know, two weeks or something from when you see this video. And I'm gonna pick a winner out of the people that have bought stickers. You support me, I'm gonna do something for you. So you got two weeks to buy some stickers, you know, as little as $3 for a single one and up from there. Just give me a message and I'll tell you how to order one. Now the giveaway is gonna be, and this is something very cool. So my friend James has a company called 90 Style. Now I'm gonna put up his Insta and website link down below. Now everything that he has on his website is stocked ready to go. He has a shitload of Drift Tengoku magazines, option magazines, and he also had done these bean bags, right? So I'm gonna put a video up here of a fully done one with all the beans in it. I have five of these to give away. Now the cool thing about them and why they're gonna be sort of sought after for the import guys is because of the patterns on them. So what these are, if you haven't spotted it yet, this one is the pattern of the old Evo Crayola seats. This one are the Confetti Recaros. This one is the HKS livery. I've got two of these because I reckon that's the best one. And this one is an old Gradient Recaro pattern, but it has a 90 style font going through it. So I've got five of these to give away. So you've got two weeks to buy some stickers. I've kept everyone's name and I'm gonna, I don't know, draw it out of a hat, get my girlfriend to pick five people, I don't know. And I'm gonna send these out to you guys, so. And head to James's shop because he also does mouse pads, gloves, um, different sizes of all these bean bags and they're priced really well. So again, go down below, check out his site and definitely buy something. And with these ones, we've done a small run, which is actually just these five, that have my logo on it, and James's logo on it. So there is the site, that's their logo. So these are the only five that are gonna have both logos on them. If you order from his site, it'll just be his company. So these are sort of like a special edition. Welcome back to the chronicles of my longest owned vehicle. So the Sephiro stuff got a really good response, so I'm going to continue. I've got to start fixing stuff on this to sort of... Fucking post your bike. Uh, yeah, start fixing stuff on this thing. I mentioned last video about leaky diff. So as you can see... The car's only been sitting there overnight. So, very, very leaky diff. I also forgot to mention, I'm gonna say this car hasn't had an oil change in probably three or four years. Now, it hasn't really been driven in that time, but that is a long time. <laughs> so, I really need, I probably need to do everything. Obviously, I'm gonna do diff oil when the diff's out. I should probably drop the oil in the box. I'll do engine oil and filter, brake fluid, eh, clutch fluid, that can all stay, that's fine. Even the cooling system, coolant's all fine in this. Got that water wetter stuff, distilled water, good coolant. So I'm gonna get changed and we're gonna get stuck into doing this car. I also always get a few comments on these wheels that I've got on the wall. Now, funnily enough, these are the old front wheels off this car. So before I found a full set of Panasports, I only had them on the back, they were on the front. These are actually really good size. They're work stitch evolutions and they're 17 by nine negative five and they clear big brakes so they're really really good front wheels i wanted to sell them but i sort of don't just because they're so cool like a rear wheel in general but in these sizes they have been rebuilt like they were a shitty size and they got new front lips on them like got a big dish on the front really really cool wheels actually if anyone has any work stitch evolution center caps i would happily buy them just to complete that pair of wheels I put a picture up here where it had those on the front. They looked really good. Thought I'd bring up an interesting fact as well. Now this car got painted, I'm gonna say it's pushing two years ago now. And I pretty much put this car together, maybe did one video on it and then it went to storage and it's been there ever since until I actually picked the car up yesterday. So the last Sephiro video you're seeing was yesterday. And I haven't washed this car. Since putting this car together, I was told don't wash it or anything because the paint was that fresh and it went into storage. So I haven't touched it, I haven't washed it. So this two years, no wash, paint hasn't been touched. 
pretty damn happy with that. So we've got the car up on stands, turned around in the garage, and I'm gonna start pulling this diff out. And I thought, for a laugh, I will show you exactly how squished this exhaust is. So I've got some verniers here. I'm gonna measure down the exhaust here where it's not squished, which is 74 mil. And here is 46 mil. So 30 mil, this has been squished in the back. <laughs> As I said, I'm under here to pull the diff out because you can see it's leaking here all over the exhaust. Dripping out the bottom here, so. I've been meaning to do this for a very long time, so I'm gonna drop this out, reseal it, change the oil, and we'll chuck it back in. So pretty simple in these, this is ready to come out. Four 17s on the back, six 12 mils on each side for the drive shafts. Tail shafts, four 14s, these two 17s here, and drop it out. So after a lot of jiggling and swearing and throwing tools, I had to drop the sway bar because it kept getting caught here, and the diff is out. So this is an S13 style with the four bolts on the back. Six bolt, because these come in six and five bolt. R200 IRS diff with four 11s and a CAS 2A LSD. So pretty good diff, but upon dropping it out, all this fell out of the end of the passenger side drive shaft. So I don't know if we can piece this back together. This car has a long history of breaking drive shafts. Both ends, huh? Fucking see you later. Other side. So it's not a surprise that shit's falling apart when I pull one out. Another funny story, the last burnout I did in this car at a mate's factory, it actually broke both drive shafts at the same time and managed to shoot the spline out the center of the wheel and into the wall, which I'll insert here. <laughs> As I've said before with this car, I was in a completely different mentality, so I would never in a million years put this back in the car like this. But back then, it was just fix it, put it back in, doesn't matter what it looks like underneath the car. So we'll give this a clean up as well while it's out. And that's what like five year old diff oil looks like. And if you could smell this, Blah. As we do with everything, I'll give this a really good clean up. I'll reseal it, some new oil, and chuck it back in here. So I'm about to put this diff back in. I gave under here a big clean as this was like centimeter thick of grease because of how many drive shafts I've exploded in this car. And when the shafts go, they always tear the boot and that throws all the grease so all up in here was just covered so i gave that a bit of a quick clean and we'll pop this diff back in diff's done filled with oil now it's time to clean all up in here now you can see brakes five stud coilovers knuckles oil filter relocator eflometers down here in the cooler piping so let's get to cleaning. This is the good part. What a difference. This was literally black before. And not just dirt, I'm talking grease and oil, like thick sludge. Another thing I just remembered while under here, you see this right here, that's a fender brace. So I put those in when I cut the tubs out, bring some strength back to the front end of this thing. So that bolts to where your door bolts to, and then a triangle across the top rail. Because these are really prone, as you saw in that S14 video, to cracking the front around here where the brake line is. So cutting these out really didn't help that, so I had to put some strength back in it. All this is all tire rubbish, so all that'll come off with the, some prep sole. And then nice and clean under here. And I found the ticking noise that I could hear. I thought it was something to do with drive shafts or something like that, but it was this cable tire hitting the tire. Now the reason I'm doing all this is, well, having just done the diff was fucking hell. So greasy, mucky, shitty under that car. There's just crap everywhere. It's been a long time since I've worked on a car that's just disgusting underneath and just, I was getting so frustrated. I did not even want to work on the car anymore. Giving it a good clean underneath should just make it a 
bit more pleasant to work on. Now today, I am going to unfortunately tackle this hot side with the cracked manifold. So as previously mentioned, for many, many years, this has had a slight crack in one of the welds down inside here where all the pipes collect together. Definitely a power loss, so, and you can definitely hear it as well. It does sort of close up once it gets warm because the metal expands, obviously, but when it's cold and first start up, you can really hear it. So I've been putting this off for a while, but it's a nice day today, so I feel I should tackle it. Now just to show how shitty I put this car together when I was a lot younger, this is the oil drain for the turbo. This hard line and it goes into a rubber hose and then into the side of the block which drains the oil out the bottom of the turbo and back into the sump. I have not touched this. Not even tight in that rubber hose, just pulled it out like it wasn't even attached. Mm -hmm. Absolute dickhead. And I was wondering why it was soaked with oil down there. So turbo's off. Um, hopefully I can leave the dump in. These bolts down here are real hard to get to for this manifold and I'm hoping, hoping I don't break any studs. Really, really, really common thing on RBs is breaking studs in the side of the head on the exhaust side. Like pretty much every time you do a hot side, you replace studs. So I'm hoping none break because then it's going to be an absolute shitstorm. I think we are ready to come out. And this only took about an hour, but it was about five minutes of undoing everything, and then 55, min 55 minutes of undoing one last manifold nut. So there we go, complete hot side off, not a single broken stud. Thank God for that. This is a manifold, an old wastegate. Now I can show you it's gonna be very hard to show that is the crack all the way along this weld here so that's what we need to get welded up now just to show you how loose this oil drain was this is the section of hose that came from this hard line that just fell out pretty much and goes back to the block and drains to the sump look at this if you can hear it is absolutely soaked. What an idiot. So you know how I keep going on about how I don't have patience for this car? Wow. That is all the brand new diff oil that I just put in the diff and put back in into the car. Now as shit as it is, it is my fault. And I'll put a picture here because there's no way you'll be able to see with the GoPro. But as you can see, where the filler plug is, has a crack through the back housing. So, I thought there's no point just pulling the diff out. It's actually a lot easier to just unhook the tail shaft and drop the whole rear end out of the car from underneath. Then at least I can clean properly under there. I can reseal and oil the diff like out instead of trying to do it under the car. It's such a pain in the ass. So it's good and it's bad. You know, I lost all the oil that I just put in, but anyway, so I'm about to drop the rear end out of this thing and I've got to go get another rear cover. Now you can get the full extent of this exhaust. <laughs> Pretty bad.
Now that's never the best idea, trying to drop that out by myself, but <laughs> I actually got it perfect. I was able to let the jack down really slowly and then just run around here and hold it while it just let itself down. So very, very simple to get the rear end out of these things. So you just let the calipers hang, exhaust, tail shaft, the four main bolts. That's pretty much it. Drop it down. So it's going to be much easier. I'm not going to do it now because it's raining. But just to pull this out on the jack, I can gurney the shit out of it, pull the diff out, out of the car, get a new case, reseal it, put it back in oil again, and hopefully that is it. And I can clean all under here properly, which is probably what I'm going to do next. So for once, something is actually going right with this car. So I'd ordered some new titanium manifold studs and like 12 point headed nuts as they're a lot easier to get in and they, I shouldn't have to change these studs ever again. So that means taking all the old studs out and as I said before, they're very prone to breaking when you take them out. So I got six out just with vice grips. Then I had to do the double nut trick to get the rest out and then there was one left that I couldn't get out and I stripped the absolute shit out of it with two nuts and then vice grips trying to get it out and last resort blowtorch and these sockets now these are a lifesaver so what they are is as you twist these on the studs they clamp down on them thank god that got it out or it was gonna have to be get anthony over here to weld a nut on it so that we can get it off but thank god the last one came out my manifolds back from project performance so troy welded this up for me there was actually more cracks than i knew about so that's all fixed and we've got all our fittings and hose for my new oil drain. I actually forgot to grab the heat sleeve. We've got a bit more actually. We've got two for the catch can, one for the oil drain into the block, uh, one here for the end of the hose. We've got two weld-ons, which are these two for the LS rocker covers. That's the adapter for the bottom of the turbo, and that's the 45 degree fitting that's gonna come off the block. Nice and clean, and I managed to pop the diff out while I was out here. This was covered in so much shit. You would not believe the state of my driveway after this. So I'm gonna grab another cover for the diff tomorrow. Swap the covers again, refill it with oil, put it back in the subframe and put it back into the car. Now I am gonna clean all up in here. All the subframes out. And I thought I'll bolt check the subframe while it's out as well, because everything's easy to get to. I'm going to say 9 out of 10 nuts and bolts were all loose. So this thing was pretty much a rolling death trap. Mini's paint panels. So I've got my subframe here. My new diff cover. And now I can show you the crack in this one. There you go. So my fault, I did the filler plug up too tight, so that one's on me, unfortunately. So put another cover, fill it back up with oil, put in the subframe, back in the car. Mr. Perfection's taken over here, because he doesn't like the way I'm doing things. You just get oil in your mouth. <laughs> From the last video of this, Paul, a lot of people want to see it finished. Wow, wait. people were interested in the finished product that RX-7 from a few videos ago. So I thought I would show you guys it freshly painted. Now back to the Sephira. So this is all back in, sealed up with a new cover without a crack in it. Now the mission is going to be to get this back into my ute. Very, very heavy. And then at least I can put it back in the car. The rear end's all back in. New diff cover. 
This all went back in very, very easy, apart from one thing, because there's always one thing. Now, apart from the exhaust being too low, the next lowest part are these studs, the front subframe ones, one over there and one here. So the ends of these were really mushroomed, so as I undid them, it stripped them, so they weren't going back on, so I had to re-tap these with new nuts. But that was about it. So I'm still just waiting for my exhaust manifold studs, and then hot side can go back on as well. And a very exciting phone call I got this afternoon from Dominator that my converter for the VN LS is ready and on its way to me. Engine can go back in as long as this converter fits. Hopefully everything I asked for is done and there's no problems, goes back together and goes back in. So that's very exciting. God, Australia Post is absolutely hopeless. I ordered new studs and nuts like titanium with like a 12 point head on them. It has been sitting at the post office locally for four days, hasn't moved and you can't go pick it up. Anyway, finally they just arrived. So these are all my new studs, 12 point heads with like Allen key bits on the end of them. So they're really easy to get in and out. So I can finally put this back together and hopefully take it for a drive. That's our new fancy exhaust studs all in. Now I can start fitting the hot side back up. And there we go, we're all done. All back together with the new lines, new studs and nuts, manifold crack fixed, our new fuel rig gauge that was pissing out fuel before. So that is it, all back together. It only took about, I don't know, an hour or so. It's pretty easy on these things. There's just one pain in the ass nut every single time. It's very, very hard to get to. But apart from that, all good. So will start it up and see if it leaks anything. I'm pretty confident.
might be van stuff as I'm pretty sure I put in this video that the converter's here so we can really get cracking on the van anyway see you guys next week